Hi, my name is Scott Morris, and this is a video based on my books, uh, Classical Guitar Complete Volume 1 and 2. And uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, getting a good tone on the guitar. And I thought before I start this discussion on tone and you know, take you through all of the little technical things here, um, I just play a little piece uh, from uh, one of my, my favorite composers, from my friend um, Andrew York, a little piece called Reflections. I won't play the whole thing, just want to play a little bit and, um, and then talk about what you need to do in order to get uh, the most beautiful sound possible from your guitar. Okay, so that was just the, the little A section to uh, Andrew York's Reflections. And, you know, I, I just picked it because it's, it's, it's a beautiful piece with, uh, you know, a gorgeous melody, a lot of, um, you know, little you know, polyphonic, uh, you know, things happening in the bass and the middle voices. Um, and, you know, there's a lot that needs to go on um, with, with the right hand in order to, uh, you know, play a piece. It's, you know, it's a simple piece, but... Uh, you know, with, with bad tone, uh, that can be a, a, a pretty different experience for, uh, for the listener. So, um, well, why is tone so important on the guitar? Well, I would say that it's the thing the guitar has sort of most going for it. You know, if you think about other instruments, um, the guitar is certainly not the loudest of the the you know the acoustic instruments sort of in the classical world um you know it's not the fastest you know for sure um it, you know we can't play the most complex music you know if you look at you know piano music you know, things like that um so you know what is it about the guitar that makes it such an appealing uh instrument one of the most popular instruments if not the most popular instrument um around and it's it's simple it's the sound of it the tone of a classical guitar is one of those beautiful sounds um, you know there is and I think that's the number one thing a classical guitarist should focus on um, because you know you may have the fastest scales in the world and you may have you know the greatest tremolo and you may have all these other things but if you're not playing with good tone it's not going to be uh, as enjoyable as, as it could be so that's what I'm going to talk about here today. Um, and it's not just about getting a, you know, a beautiful sound. You know, you don't always want to have a warm, lush, you know, you know, full sound. You know, sometimes you want to, you know, play brighter, or sometimes you want it to be like really super warm. So there are expressive uh, elements to tone as far as interpretation goes. So you can make little, little choices. It's almost like orchestrating um, you know, from, from a composer, you know, you know, for a symphony. Like, that could be brass, or that could be strings, or whatever it might be. Um, it's also important to understand the correct way to pluck the string in order to get the most out of your personal instrument. Um, you know, if, if, if you are having trouble projecting um, you know, you're having trouble being heard, you know, whatever it is, you're bringing out the melody. Um, sometimes the answer is not just simply to play louder because, you know, if you're moving the string in the wrong direction, something like that, actually, you know, it'll just get worse, really. Um, so, you know, we've got to talk about the mechanics of exactly how to uh, move those fingers. And then, you know, the last sort of, you know, thing here before we get into uh, exactly how to do this is if 
you learn how the hands really work and, and how the fingers go through the strings, it's actually the best way uh, to avoid things like, you know, you know, hand injuries. Because, you know, a lot of the things that, that, that players do that get them a bad tone are usually things that are bad for their hands anyway, like, you know, pulling up on the strings or, you know, you know whatever, um, you know, not following through, not relaxing um, in exactly the right way. So you can actually hurt yourself by, by you know, playing with bad technique. So um, let's just first start with some of the, the really basic ideas here. And, you know, this, this is, you know, if you've been studying classical guitar, um, you know, for even a, you know, relatively short period of time, you've probably heard a lot of this stuff, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it anyway, even if it's review uh, for, uh, for most of you. But uh, here goes. So th the thing you want to first understand is just, you know, how, how the hand actually works. And the most important thing to know is this knuckle joint here, there, that's the one that you want to use most. Now, you know, I've heard some teachers say that the, the you know, middle joint here doesn't move at all. That, that's not really true. Um, you know, it, it moves a little bit, but I, I think what they're trying to say is if you move entirely from there, then, then that's really bad. Um, so you want to move from the, the big knuckle there. Now, the other thing that's really important to understand is after each time you pluck, you need to relax your finger. So you have to get really good at plucking and then letting go. And always doing it the same way. Because if you're sometimes, you know, plucking the string this way and sometimes plucking it that way, you haven't really worked out exactly what's supposed to be going on, you're not going to have consistent tone. You know, you, you know I, I can't remember who said it, but um, maybe nobody said it. I don't know, maybe I made it up. But you should always know what the sound is going to be of a note before you pluck it. You know, you shouldn't be surprised by, by the sound that it makes. If you're surprised by it, then you probably did something wrong. So, um, one last little thing I would say is once you start to understand how the hands work and, and how to get good tone, I think it's important to always play with good tone and good technique. You know, for instance, you know, when I'm tuning a guitar, you know, when I'm going through, just you know, checking my tuning, I'm actually thinking about good tone there as well. I don't suddenly go to like some really weird, you know, follow through or some weird hand position for that. So, you know, every time I, I move the string, I'm, I'm thinking about getting, getting a good sound. Okay, so, you know, a couple things that uh, I'd like to cover. I'm not going to get into a whole thing. Uh, you know, nail shape is, is really important um, in, in, in tone production. You know, in some ways it's, it's one of the most important things. Um, and I'm going to you know, touch on it a little bit, but I'm not going to get into, you know, some sort of bold statement about everybody's nails need to be shaped in a particular, you know, way and they're all the same because not everybody's nails are the same. Um, not everybody's, you know, hands are the same. Some people have, you know, different lengths, you know, fingers. Like some people have a really short eye finger and a really long end finger. Some people, they're all kind of about the same. All sorts of things going on there. Um, some people's nails, you know, are very curved, some people they're very flat, some they hook, you know, on the side. So, you know, you kind of have to, you know, get together with somebody who really knows what they're doing and, uh, you know, work with your own nails. But for me, I find generally um, a, a ramp-like shape for the eye finger especially and the M finger. My, my nails look pretty long. They're not as long as they look. You know, if I were to hold my hand, you know, more like, more like that. You know, or, or like this, you can see that you know that eye nail is not quite as long as it looks from from this side. You know, chewed my nails when I was a kid. You know, what can I say? Um, so uh, th it's shorter here and it's longer here. And and here's the basic idea: the string, when you go down to, to plant, you're going to be right there in the corner, right there in the corner. And then what you're going to do is follow through from the big knuckle here. And the way I like to think of it is you're going to follow through towards your elbow. And then what happens is the string 
which starts here as you follow through, goes up the ramp, and then is gradually released. And it's that gradual release, this, this sort of slicing of the string that gives you that nice big full sound. You see, if I, if I were to change the angle here and go more like straight through, hear that sound? So, you know, if somebody's playing like this all the time, that's the tone they're going to get, you know, unless he did some, you know, different kind of nail shape. But, you know, generally speaking for, for, for most, I think, this, this, you know, light ramp works really, really well. Same is true for the M finger. You know, string starts in the corner here. As you follow through, plucking from the big knuckle joint there, the string moves up the ramp and then leaves it gradually. The A finger is a little bit more problematic for most, um, just because of where it sits on the hand. Um, I, I found for me, um, I more or less just contour, the, you know, the, the nail to the the shape of the the finger. Um, you know, sometimes I change things up. You know, that's the other thing you need to understand. Um, you know, you know, professional guitar players change their nail shape all the time. Um, well, maybe not all the time, but you know, it's not like you find the one and it works for you. Uh, so sometimes I've, you know, experimented with even a reverse ramp where it's shorter on this side, just because of, you know, where the finger is on the string. See, so you can get a nice warm sound there with that as well. And I think, you know, you know, sitting there with, you know, a file, I've got one here somewhere, oh, here you go, um, one of these little guys with, uh, you know, got the rougher bit here, a little less rough there. Um, smoother, very smooth, right here. And pluck the string. And if you feel like you're getting caught anywhere, or if, if you feel you know like a scratchiness, you should have a, like a glassy smooth, uh, you know, you know, nail. I like to take my thumbnail like that and kind of go across it like that. If I feel anything, um, a little nick or anything like that, I go right to the the file and you know take care of it. Um, you know, the other thing is, you know, a lot of people just think about, you know, filing like that. And that's right, you know, because you do want to file at this 45 degree angle. But don't forget, you know, to buff the top as well. Because if you do this correctly, the string will start here, but as you follow through, it leaves here. And it will kind of, you know, see that part of the nail. So if you're only working on that there and this is rough up here, you'll get a scratchy sound. Um, that's about as far as I really want to go into nails because it's, it's, a, it's a much more complicated, um, you know, conversation. And again, like I said, everybody's nails are a little bit different. And, you know, you know, I used to think there was one shape that worked for everybody. And then I'd, you know, run into some guitar player somewhere getting a great sound and, you know, check out their nails. And they've done something completely different than me. Um, so, you know, all, all sorts of things work for all sorts of people. Um, I guess the, 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 you know, the bottom line is nail shape matters and you want to make sure that you have a nail shape that's working for you and that's helping you achieve good tone. Okay, so let's talk about a couple other little things here. Um, you know, once, once you get your nails in the right position, in the right shape, and your hand in the right position, so you're slicing those strings, you need to find your sort of normal or kind of, you know, base fundamental um, tone. So what, what is your just general tone? If you're not gonna brighten it up, you're not gonna warm it up, you know, what is your, you know, kind of like bottom line kind of tone? And what, what works for me is this. I usually think about putting the eye finger here, right about where the sound hole begins, like that. thumb is a little bit over. Okay. Um, now, one of the things that, you know, I notice a lot of, 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 of students doing, and, um, you know, a lot of my students, I'm correcting this a lot with them, is they'll play like this. And they hear this really warm tone. And they think, great, I figured it out. The problem is, the sound hole isn't called sound hole for nothing. 
Um, it's kind of like, you know, where the majority of the sound comes out here, it's like a speaker and what you're doing is you're putting your hand directly in front of it. And as I said earlier, the guitar is already one of the quietest instruments out there. So to put your hand directly in front of it to create sort of like a, you know, a, a fake kind of, you know, good tone here is a really bad idea. Um, just to, you know, you know, think about maybe like a singer, something like that. It, it's almost like a singer, you know, putting their hand in front of their mouth to, to, to sing. Um, of course, nobody would do that. That'd be silly, but guitar players are constantly putting their hands here. Now, you can come over here as a special effect. You know, we call that tosto. Right? You know, you know, do that sort of thing all the time where maybe you're playing like... sound there um, but that's a special effect that's the thing you have to understand that's a special effect this isn't your normal playing position because you'll just have a quiet really warm tone all the time and it can actually get really muddy so if you're playing you know contrapuntal music um, you know baroque music re renaissance music or you know, even the piece I played by by Andy um, has, has a lot of polyphony in it voices will get lost it'll be muddy so that's a special effect called Tosto. Now as I move this way, you hear it brightening up. Now I didn't change the angle of my hand. I didn't change the angle of attack or how I'm releasing the string at all. All I did was move the hand this way. So I go from warmer, brighter, brighter. There's my normal tone. Now there's another special effect if you keep going. You get over here. We call that ponticello or sul ponticello. And that's a nice little special effect as well. Kind of like you know trumpets or something in the orchestra. So ponticello. Some other like you know kind of cool little special effecty things you can do you can get like a, like a little what sounds like a bass clarinet or something yeah, from playing you're know, basically like an octave above um, but you know the thing that I'm trying to you know get across to you is when I'm when I'm playing a piece of music um, I'm actually thinking with each note that I play not just about how loud or how quiet it should be, but what about the tone? You know, what can I do to, to make it a little bit more, you know, interesting? And you can experiment with, with different things, you know, just making stuff up. But kind of experimenting, you know, well, almost, well, that was mostly improv, improvised, but, you know, I might find something that I really like, you know, I want to bring this little, you know, motif out, or bring this bass line out, you know, or, or warm that bit up, whatever it is, um, but, you know, what I don't usually enjoy is hearing, you know, a, a, especially a long, you know, guitar piece, or in some cases, an entire program, where it's just one tone whole time and it never changes you know there's never anything creative going on with that so what I recommend you do is in your pieces keep a pencil on your music stand when you're working and and think about this sort of thing again it, it's it's like orchestrating a piece you know occasionally you have composers who are really uh, you know particular about these sorts of things um, you know where they might write you know bright here you know warm here tosto potticello um, you see it a lot in, in contemporary music, but you know if you go back and you're looking at you know Giuliani or or Soar, or, you know certainly if you're playing Bach, um, anything like that, there's there's nothing there unless it's editorial to tell you. So you have to make these decisions yourself, um, and those are creative decisions 
Um, they shouldn't be random. Um, they should be thought out. And you know, once I do come up with these, you know, little things like I like to play, you know, this part bright, this part warm, you know, whatever it might be, I write that in the score, and I, I more or less keep it that way. You know, I might change little things up on on the on the fly every once in a while, but but most of the time. Um, it, you know, if I play that bit bright, I'm going to play it bright. If I play that bit warm, if I decide I'm going to play it warm, I'm going to play it warm. Um, again, you know, you know, I'm assigning that bit to the trumpets. I'm assigning that bit to a cello. I'm assigning that bit to you know bass clarinet or whatever it might be. So, to sum up the the you know the little lesson here, um, you know, basically, it all starts with the right hand. You've got to think about hand position, you've got to understand the best way to go through the string, you've got to understand the nails. The nails are very important. Um, without correct nail shape, or if your nails are in bad shape, if they're rough, or whatever it might be, everything's going to be scratchy. Um, you know, say you could have a you know, $20,000 guitar, but if you know, your nails are bad, or you don't understand the right hand, it's like having you know, a $20,000 stereo, you know, old, you know, audiophile stuff with a turntable and you've got a, you know, dusty, worn out old needle on there, everything's still going to sound bad. It doesn't matter that you have this, you know, top of the line system because the thing that's actually in contact with, with the vinyl is, uh, is, is not good. So that's going to be amplified. So you've got to remember it all, it all starts here. Follow through with the finger, push down on the string, release and relax. Don't pull up, you get that. Follow through, pushing down, and, and practice this. Um, you know, it, it might sound kind of boring, but you know, one of the things I do, because I work on tone a lot, when I sit down to, to warm up, you know, I'll just sit and play. just repeat that you know sometimes you know 50 times maybe 100 times just listening and you know if, if there's something wrong with the nail I've got my file and I'm you know constantly working on it do the same thing with the M finger do the same thing with the A finger play fingers together play arpeggios and you know when you speed up you know your tone shouldn't change it should always be the same movement so you've got to really think about that stuff. So, tone, get a nice, normal, warm tone, understand how that works, understand how moving around gets you special effects. You can alter it, you know, on purpose, also for another special effect. Uh, the main thing I'm trying to do here is just to get you really thinking about it. It's, it's, in my opinion, just about the most important thing a guitar player can spend their time on because what is it people love about the guitar? It's the sound of the guitar. So it's the tone of the guitar. So make that a priority in your practice, and I'll see you in the future. Thanks.